This conversation is brought to you in part by Calavo Growers, the family of fresh. Hey, hi, ho, everybody. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. Wherever the hell you are. I'm glad you're here. Matt's glad you're here. We're hanging out. We're going to have a great conversation today talking with my boy about the Organic Grower Summit and different things that are going on in his world at OPN. You all know him. He's been out kicking clods and making the industry a better place, especially with what he's bringing to the table these days. It's so impressive. Everybody give it up for the CEO of the Organic Produce Network, my friend, brother from another mother, Matt Seeley. Welcome, my man. Hey, brother, right back at you. It's good to be with you on a Tuesday morning here. It's great. I'm glad I'm glad that you're here hanging out with us, man. I'm excited about this. I'm excited to talk about what's going on. I'm really excited, to, A, to talk about uh, some of the consumption things that are going on, which I want to get into, which I'm really looking forward to chatting on. I'm going to talk about what's going on with the Organic Grower Summit this year. Blowing up as it normally does. It's hot and heavy. I can't wait to talk about it. There's some fun stuff going. So before we get rolling, say hi to everybody. Introduce yourself a little bit. I mean, I tried to build you up as best I could. Most of it was lies, but I'll let you tell the truth now. Tell everybody, tell everybody a little bit about yourself, and we'll get rocking. All right, brother. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I kind of got involved with the produce industry actually with the Fresh Produce Council. Myself and uh, Jan Delizer down there in Los Angeles before she yeah. went off to uh, the be the queen of avocados the, on the avocado things. But she's my girl. Uh, so worked there with Jan, and then I had the opportunity to spend uh, nearly 30 years with the Nunes Company up here in Salinas, California. Tremendous, tremendous family-run operation. Uh, actually, the interesting thing is uh, the company is now run by T5. You know, yeah. they, got the, they got all the Tom Nunes's, and now we're on the fifth T5 Tom Nunes. And I was fortunate enough, he is, and we'll talk about him in a little bit, he is actually going to be part of the keynote at this year's uh, Organic Grower Summit. But, I love it. Uh, but awesome. It, uh, just a tremendously run, family-run organization. Great, great knowledge, great wisdom. Like I say, kind of had an opportunity to cut my teeth with them. And then as we got involved, as they got involved in organic, kind of saw this opportunity, you know, they, hey, we our industry doesn't have an event connected to the organic uh you know, to organic growing yeah. production and that kind of thing. Uh, so we're fortunate. We've got two events uh, that we host, the Organic Produce Summit in July. And as we'll be talking about here a little bit later, the Organic Grower Summit Grower here summit. Uh, at the end of uh, first November, night, November 30th and December 1st. First, so yeah, we've got no we got some great stuff coming down the pike. What a great what a what a great way to work off little pie and stuffing walks of show floor in Monterey. What a great dessert that'll be. Exactly. You've spent all that time with the family. Now yeah, time to get the hell out with your friends. Time you know? to get the hell out. Time to get the hell out. Everybody's going to need a cocktail by then. Away exactly. from the family. Yeah, exactly. For sure. Exactly. Well, let's, let's exactly. get into it a little bit. I, and I'd like to open up, if we can, I'd like to talk a little bit about, you know, some of the dollar and consumption numbers that the organic industry is seeing in 2022. Obviously, the economy comes into play, and we're going to get into that probably a little bit, I'm sure. But if you wouldn't mind just Take off and run for a bit, brother, and let me know what you're thinking about consumption numbers and what the category is looking like. Yeah, you know, and I think, you know, we've talked about this, that, you know, we came out of the the 19, you know, the the past decade, year after year, double digit growth. growth. And we were, you know, and obviously you're not, that's not sustainable. You just can't continue to have double digit growth. At the same time, our industry, we, we've got the greatest products in the world to sell. And there's no reason why we should not be at least continuing the trend doesn't necessarily have to be double digits, but it should be, you know, we should be rocking and rolling and increasing consumption, uh, you know, every quarter. As we have seen with the, you know, current economic conditions, you know, we're, we're flatlining a little bit. At, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'm going to be a little bit generous. Uh, dollar sales are up, and I think we can contribute that to inflation, higher prices. However, volume is down. Volume is down. We are not moving as much product as we used to and i think yeah. there's some reflection that we've got to be doing as an industry uh acknowledge where we are right now but what are we looking to do to kind of get ourselves back on track uh you know to kind of turn those those negative numbers into positives there's no doubt well look the, the current economy on a global scale is affecting the organic sector a report had just come out of the uk right talking came out of the agriculture and horticulture development board and they reported that, um, you know, organic foods saw a 16% decline, 16% decline in volume sales in the second quarter of this year. And I know that that's exactly what's happening here. 
because we have a tendency economically in a lot of ways to kind of follow just right behind right. what they do over in Europe. And it's quite concerning um, because we had so much positive momentum to your point. And this pandemic gave fruit and vegetables a whole lot of positive momentum, even though at the beginning it was nuts when we lost restaurant. I mean, I get all that, but when that thing kind of got on track and way we were going and the, the life we were forced to live in a lot of ways, we had a lot of momentum. We had a lot of people eating at home. We had a lot of people cooking. We had a lot of people invested in their food and their health and everything else. And it's very scary to see how quickly that's changed. So talk a little bit, if you wouldn't mind, and maybe come back around my soapbox moment there and, and talk about some of the trends in the data and maybe things we should be watching or things we should be concerned about. Thanks for joining the Todd Versation. And now a word from our sponsor. Hello, this is Jesse from Superior Fresh. Check us out at www.superiorfresh.com to learn more about how we raise our Atlantic salmon without the use of hormones, antibiotics, or pesticides. Our Heart Check certified salmon boasts two times the omega 3s of other salmon and are fed an organic and non GMO diet. Our fish thrive in water naturally filtered by our USDA certified organic greens, which allows us to recycle 99.9% .9 of our water. This is salmon as it should be. Order Superior Fresh Salmon direct to your home by shopping with us online. And listeners of this episode can use the discount code TLC15 to receive 15% off your order. We make it easy to get the best salmon in your homes and on your plates. We've got you covered. Superior Salmon equals superior taste. Shop now and use code TLC15 for 15% off through the end of the month. Yeah, I, I look at I obviously, you know, it, it's t it, the, the hardest factor is there's a reason for this increase, the, this increase. And, and I think let's look at the production side, Todd. We know that cost, the cost of doing business, the inputs, the cost of inputs is helping to drive this, drive this. What used sure. to you know, uh, you know, the break even points for a lot of these companies have just gone up considerably over the past two to three years. And I think that that's a major major, major factor. I think the other thing are supply chain challenges that we have had along the way. Look how much it costs. You know, I, I realize truck rates are, are fluctuate during the course of the year, but, you know, upwards, you know, 15K to get from, you know, from here to California to the, to the East, Coast East Coast on truck. Yeah. All these things, I think, have added to the challenge. And obviously that retailer, he's got to make a little bit on his, on his end. We've seen wages go up. I think that there's been this perfect storm of things that have contributed to our to our rising, you know, to the rising cost of things. Um, and at, then at the same time, Prada, let's be honest, we consumers have a have a choice. I think you and I come from that thing. We hope we look at it, at the end of the day, we want everybody to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables. That's job number one. One. When you when you look at what we do, hey, we it's a choice. We hope that all things considered that you will purchase organic for what it's doing for your health, what it's doing for the environment, what it and what it what it's ultimately doing for for every for your family's health and, and betterment. So at the end of the day, we hope that that's what's going to happen. But uh, again, I think there's a lot of unknowns that that we've got to deal with, and I yeah. also think that there are industry pressures that also inhibit us in some ways from going to the next step. And, you know, I know that you're, you're very involved when it comes to what uh, NOSB is doing, the, the, the uh, strengthening of organic standards and some of those kind of things. We have got to be forward thinking in what we're doing. I think that's the biggest challenge that we face. We shouldn't be looking at things like ag tech, the growth of CEA and that kind of thing. Those are not our enemies. Those are not our, those are part of the future. And we've yeah. got to be mindful of that and work together. It's a huge, you know, again, it's that trivial trite thing. It's a huge sandbox and we can, all, it's the truth though. We've got, we, there are a lot of different factors in this industry. We all have an opportunity to make life better for all of us, but we, you know, we can't be necessarily doing some of the things that we've been doing in the past, hoping that it's going to continue for us to grow. We just can't continue down that road. So. Dude, that is so well said and I 100 percent agree with you. Um, you know, look, bottom line, we know we have declining uh, population of farmers coming into farm. 
you take a look at what's going on in the schools today. The kids, they don't want to, they're not interested in going out to the dirt. They're interested in going into the tech business. They're interested in what they can do with their phones. They're interested in agriculture that way. We've got to embrace this. We've got to look at how we're going to feed, you know, 9.5 billion people. And I firmly believe if we don't have the, the, the desire to at least attempt to have conversations focused around how we're going to do that organically, I think we're not serving ourselves as a community. I really don't. So I appreciate your words. Do that. No, no, and that's just it. And I think, you know, that kind of dovetails a little bit into what we're hopefully looking to do, you know, at the Organic Grower Summit and what we try to do, you know, at the recent OPS as well. It's all about that information exchange. What can we do to better all of us as we all move forward? You know, again, and, and particularly on the heels of COVID. Mm-hmm. Thank God we're not doing the COVID rewind. You know, what was COVID like? We got it. We've got to be forward thinking, you know, yeah. the, car, the car is going forward. Yeah, yeah I, I get it. There's a rear view mirror that you got to check. But gosh, darn it. Our road, our road is in front of us, not behind us. Yeah, I agree 100 percent. And we're going to lose. We're going to continue to lose market share if we're not forward thinking. We're going to continue to lose consumers to attributes and to things that are going to resonate with them. And it's a real big concern. It's something that I hold dear to my heart and something I talk about all the time. And, and, I, and I appreciate you know, I appreciate you bringing it up. And. You know, you, you said something about OPS, and I and I want to I want to jump on that and, and and run with that a bit because that really was I mean that went full bore this year, right? I mean it was I mean the energy in the room and like I told you, it's like the asylum door was open and everybody saw the sunlight <laughs> for the first time, right? I mean it was people were just I mean you could just feel that vibe and energy. You got the same thing going with the Organic Grower Summit right now. People are inspired by what's going out. The, the show floor is already the the booths are all gone, as you know expected people are signing up things are rocking and rolling it's got that same vibe and feel to it so, which is super super exciting and one of the things that i i, I want to get into and I, and I don't and i want to be mindful of it I, I put this at f- front of mind is your partnership with western growers and how they're helping and how you guys are you know connected at the hip and what's going on can you touch on that a little bit and how you're feeling about where things are at yeah it's been it's been a couple of years now since we've had western growers involved and as you know western growers members of western growers grow over half of the fresh fruits and vegetables that are consumed in this country that you know western growers is is is, is unbelievable in what they and the and the association they've got the affiliation with the actual growers but the other area that western growers has really kind of taken under its wing and we've got it here in Salinas with their with their uh, innovation center. Is that area of ag tech? They mm-hmm. they really want to own that, and they've they've been doing that through a variety of outreach events that they've been hosting. They've got a major event, Fira, uh, that is was recently held in uh, in Fresno. Uh, so again, they this ag tech component is huge for them, and we're kind of partnering with them to kind of ride those coattails. As you can imagine, though, we're 60 miles away from Silicon Valley and all of the great stuff that's coming out out there. So one of the things that Western Growers is able to do is connect with these various things. It could be the software, Todd. It could be AI. It could be the robotics. There's all kinds of tangents related to the ag tech arena. Things that they're doing with tractors, laser weeding. I mean, it, it's phenomenal, the things that are going out there. And Western Growers has really staked the claim to that. And through our partnership with them, we're able to work in collaboration. We've got three different educational sessions devoted to ag tech. One of them's a show and tell kind of thing where we're going to mm-hmm. have uh, some of the major players kind of show their equipment and work and show what some of these growers are doing hand in hand with them. We've got an air. We've got a section on the future of ag tech. Uh, it's spearheaded by by Shauna Day, who works with the uh, Cultura Capital. Uh, uh, and again, obviously, mon- the millions of dollars being poured into ag tech. And we've got leadership from three of those organizations, from three major ag tech companies that'll be a part of that. Mm-hmm. And then the third leg of this is really working with uh, the kind of showcase what WJ does with their ag sharks. As you may know, every year at their annual uh, meeting, they have an ag shark competition where financial support is awarded or offered to, uh, to, one, of their, uh, to one of the finalists uh, to keep their business moving. And we will replicate that at OGS this year, we're going to have the three ag sharks, re, you know, kind of do their do their pitches again for our audience. So our audience has an opportunity to see, hey, this is what's coming down the pike. 
as it relates to ag tech. So ag tech is a huge component of obviously what Washington Growers is doing, and we've kind of incorporated that into our program. That's awesome. The thing, did you ever think 20 years ago you'd have a, even the word ag tech would be in conversation, let alone have its own devoted to the land and the trade I, No, I don't think it is. <laughs> and further to that point, think about how, how often you see it today. Oh, you know, sure. it, 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 it's everywhere. Todd, as again, going back to the cost of things, people are looking at the biggest thing is how can I take labor out of the situation? Yeah. So when we're developing programs, we've got robotics. These are these are perfect opportunities for our industry to remove the labor, the, the manual labor component, put that in the hands of ag tech and make us that much more efficient and hopefully cost effective in the products that we're offering. It's amazing for, for, for those that, that pay attention to it, you know, for those that don't get into it, just spend a Saturday morning with a cup of coffee and read these different things. And some of these different companies that are out doing some of the stuff. Some of the things that are happening out there are absolutely amazing. Using AI technology to look in the eye of a fish to see how fresh it is. Right. I mean, to look at, at to look at, you know, to your point, laser weeding, drone technology, water savings, different. I mean, it's unbelievable what's going on out there. And, 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 you know, I think sometimes too, and well, not sometimes, but you know, generally saying that anytime you've got a downturn in the economy and things start to change, innovation starts to ramp itself up at that very moment. And I think you're going to see a bunch of that coming. And to your point, how many millions, excuse me, billions of dollars have been invested invested in ag tech in the past 24 months is staggering. Absolutely. It's and, it, and it's get look at it's it's a very ever-changing, diverse uh uh landscape that's going on out there but you've got these growers they're not afraid that's the other thing as we look to the future they're not to your point what was done 20 years ago may not have an application right now it's that forward thinking and so many of these growers they're willing to try this new technology to see if it's you know if it's going to help their business well they're going to have look we just talked about in the beginning of the show right the economy is 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 declining production, right? They're not selling the same five boxes. They're selling three and a half boxes now. And that's going to be a problem. They're going to have to find ways to keep surviving. And we're going to need to figure out ways to help support that survival because being food insecure is really scary to me. I, I, that, that concerns me more about our country than, than a whole lot of other things. Yeah, um, exactly. Like you said, we've got billions and billions of people that we need to feed. So yeah, and feeding, them or, feeding them organically would be really cool. It's a great goal. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's go ahead. No. So I was going to say, so the ag tech component is obviously going to be front and center at, right. at, o, at OGS. At the same time, you know, we've got one of the things that we pride ourselves on is our education program. And I think, you know, I think we do a really good job at OPS. You know, when we bring together the retailers and, and, the, and those on the production side. But the, what, o, what, what we do at OGS, the Organic Grower Summit, it really is those supply chain partners and service providers connecting with the actual growers. And as yeah. part of that, information and education is paramount. And that's what we've tried to do. So we talked about the technology component, but there's, all, you know, there's a variety of other things that are going on. As we know, yeah. and as, hey, Todd, just what you, know, what you did, for us at, at, at OPS, when you're talking about CEA, CEA is not going away. It's got some, I think it's got some financial challenges that we're going through and Absolutely. Probably not everybody's going to make it, but nope. the concept of controlled environmental agriculture is not going away. And right. that's a huge component. We're going to be talking about that at, at, at OGS. Another thing that's, that's front and center for people is, is regenerative. What is this, you know, this word regenerative? What does this mean? You know, hey, I think in my personal opinion, I think it's got some applications in the Midwest when you're talking about wheat and grain and, and some of those kind of things. I think the jury's still out as to what it's going to mean to specialty row crop producers, yeah. you know, and, and the like. But it's front and center. And working with CCOF, Jesse Parr has have put together a tremendous session here where we've actually got uh, with, with that, we've got uh, uh, we've got the uh, the head, Elizabeth uh, from uh, ROC. Uh, I'm just trying to see who else we've got here. We've, we've got uh, 
And we've got uh, Anne-Marie Hogan for, from Whole Foods. And she's going to talk a little bit about, you know, on the other end, what's the, what's the, what is the retailer? How is the retailer reacting to, uh, right. to regenerative? And what's that mean for the future? Is, is, regener- is, it, is it organic 2.0? Is it organic on steroids? What is, what is this term regenerative? And again, for the future of our business, what does this mean? So well, how- these are these are all front and center subjects that we want to bring, you know, to attendees at this year's event. Well, and, and to your point earlier, it's about looking forward, right? How do we get to how do we look forward with this? And it's out there, right? It's happening. You see, you know, there's regenerative seal out there now. There's a lot of buzz going around with it. I, I, I agree with, with what you said. I think it's going to be an interesting cycle. But I'm encouraged by some of the guys up in Salinas. There's guys up there that are working on it. They're trying to figure out how to do it row crop. They're putting energy into it to learn whether it sinks or swims. I don't know, but I think that it's, it's exciting to see that. But, you know, it's so important, I think, when you come to a show like this, that you have this robust educational program, that you have places where ideas can be discussed, where opinions can be formed, where differences can be discussed, um, you know, because we don't get that, right? I think that a lot of times that in this industry, and I've said it countless times, it seems like 10% really speak for about 90% of us at times. And that becomes really dangerous. Yeah. And I think we need to, we need to flip that over. We need to get that 90% involved uh, and get your opinions out there. Don't be shy. Step up, send me an email. I'll say it for you. You know, whatever. I don't give a shit. Let's go. But we've got to keep this thing rolling. If we want to protect the integrity of what's been created to date and to advance this Again, let's feed 9.5 billion people organic food. I'm all about it. Exactly. You know? So exactly. I, commend you, I commend you guys. What else is on the docket? Anything else exciting? Well, Don't forget the keynote. I want to hear the keynote. T5 yeah, we'll, speaking. What, no, what, we'll, does he have a trailer? No bullshit. Does he have a trailer <laughs> with like lilies in it and shit? What, is his, what are his demands? <laughs> no, he's, he's, all, he's all good. He's all good. I'll talk about the keynote in just a second. <clears throat> I think one of the other things as we've, cha- as we've talked about, as we look to the future, changing rules and regulations, procedures and protocols that the industry has to follow. So that's gonna be one of the things we kind of titled the get ahead of the curve and avoid regulatory speed bumps. As we know, NOP and the strengthening of uh, organic standards front yeah, yeah. and center you know, for our industry. And we're fortunate to not have a hour and a half uh, panel headed by John Foster. And I know that you know John as well, Great you know, guy. former NOSB board member. And he's got he's got uh, with him uh, he's got Connie Carr, who heads up Oregon Tilth. Uh, which, right. So again, we're not just California; we're kind of we're expanding, going up to the Pacific sure. Northwest. We got Emily Musgrave with uh, with Driscoll's going to be on the thing, and then also the the new president of OTA, Tom Chapman, will be on that panel. So we got a well-rounded, diverse panel that's going to talk about some of the changes that are heading our way as it relates to the regulatory issues that we, that the industry will be facing. I love it. You know, it's so important. And, you know, I, I had the great fortune of having uh, Dr. Jennifer Tucker on my broadcast five times now working on number six. And one of the things that she always talks about is how important it is for people to participate in the process when it comes to rules and regs and standards and everything else. And that this is the way the process works. It's about everybody having a voice at the table. This is how the system works. And if we do not take that on as a responsibility, as an organic community, we are doing ourselves a disservice. Because again, those 10% may have an agenda. We all need to be a part of the process to get the ball down the field together. And so participating, I'm glad you're going to have that panel. I'm looking forward to that one. I think it's going to be very interesting to get some perspective on stuff. But again, the number one call to action to me that I could say to anybody listening at this, you know, at this juncture, participate in the process. It's how the system's designed to work. Right. And we're, and look at, we're not all going to get along. We are, family, no. you know, we're not we're a family. We've got different views, different viewpoints, different perspectives on things. But I think that we can all agree. Well, that's your point. What worked 20 years ago may not be the case today. And we've got to be forward thinking and how we are going to look at this future. And as you say, feed these billions of people out there with healthy, nutritious, and safe produce. Thanks for joining the Todd Versation. And now, a word from our sponsor. Hello, this is Jesse from Superior Fresh. Check us out at www.superiorfresh.com to learn more about how we raise our Atlantic salmon without the use of hormones, antibiotics, or pesticides. Our heart check certified salmon boasts two times the omega-3s of other salmon and are fed an organic and non-GMO diet. 
Our fish thrive in water naturally filtered by our USDA certified organic greens, which allows us to recycle 99.9% .9 of our water. This is salmon as it should be. Order Superior Fresh Salmon direct to your home by shopping with us online. And listeners of this episode can use the discount code TLC15 to receive 15% off your order. We make it easy to get the best salmon in your homes and on your plates. We've got you covered. Superior salmon equals superior taste. Shop now and use code TLC15 for 15% off through the end of the month. Yeah, hundred percent agree. A hundred percent agree. And even more important now, as we go back again, let's let's bring go back to what we started. Decline in the economy, decline in sales, decline in units. There's all the more reason that we have to all get around the table. And as I say, let's get a pizza and a six pack of beer, and we have to solve these problems like big kids. And we'll even do cauliflower crust if we need to. There you, but we, there you go. There but you we go. need to do it. But we need to do it. There I you go. It. So all right, let's go. Keynote, come in. I, I got to hear the T five thing. What's happening? No, so so again, I, I I've always, you know, obviously, I've I've kept T five in my back pocket for when I need it. Heavy hitter. I, like I, 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 I tip my. I went to the bullpen. I gave you know. I need that right. I need that right arm and and that kind of thing. So T five is gonna is gonna be is gonna be on that panel. Uh, Michael Dupuy with Divine uh, Flavor, just a tremendous company growing a lot of organic produce out of Mexico is going to be there. Yeah. And then Bree Ryder Smith, who um, handles uh, some product development for Driscoll. Um, she will also be the, the third panelist on that. Dave Puglia will be leading the uh, president the Western of, of Western Growers. He's going to be leading the conversation. It's a 50 minute. We're calling it a growers roundtable. No subject, to your point, no subject is off the table. So we're going to be talking about anything from supply chain, fair, what's going on with, with, with fair trade. Obviously, this inflation slash recession issue, labor, water. So we want to hear from these leaders about how they are addressing some of these issues. But again, Todd, our, if there's a theme, if there's a mantra for what we're doing, it's forward thinking. What is our future? What does our future look like? I love it, man. It's not, I mean, I, I'm digging it. There's a couple, I'm, and the egg, I didn't get back into it, but the egg shark thing, I just came from a shark tank right. event and got to sit and be a part of it. And I got to tell you, if you've never sat through one, it's one thing to watch them on TV, right? That's it, yeah, whatever. If you've never been in the room to watch that, it's a kick in the ass. It's so much fun to listen to folks go up there and just literally open their hearts and just like, you know, they have so much passion. It's, passion. A, it's, it's the it's passion so that motivated. they have it's for what they, de de what they develop. Yeah, it, yeah it, it's, it's awesome. It's yeah, awesome. It, it'll be great. It's That's awesome. great. And yeah. then you got a farmer farmer of the year award too. Come yeah, on. to kind of put a bow on the to put a bow on the package. And you talk passion. Um, our our grower of the year this year is is Jeff Huckabee with uh, with Grimway Farms. So obviously Jeff, longstanding um, uh, resident and leader of Grimway, we're thrilled honor to have him as this year's grower of the year um uh, again and we'll, we'll be awarding him that that is done through agco and fent uh who, who are the sponsors of that i want to give them a little plug for their ongoing support but we are honored to uh to have uh, uh jeff be the recipient of this year's presentation and as a little extra special bonus um one of the things that but that Jeff is always touted was his relationship with Whole Foods. And we were fortunate enough this year at OPS to have Walter Robb, former president of Whole Foods, right. uh, be a part of the panel. When Walter was aware that Jeff was going to be receiving this award, how can I be involved? So uh, Walter Robb will be part of this year's awarding of the Grower of the Year Award to Jeff Huckabee. So we're thrilled oh, to have some, that as well. That'll be some great insight. I love it. Yeah, yeah. So we're uh, so we think we overall we think we've got a great two days uh, planned. It is jam packed, you know. Yeah. Again, with a heavy emphasis on the education, the information. That's that's one of the ways. To your point, I think that we kind of differentiate ourselves. There's there's so many great shows in our industry, um, but we think for this organic thing that education is paramount to our. Ex to, uh, to the success of as we continue to grow. So education, information exchange is job one for us. 100% agree. Well, that's great. Jeff's, Jeff's a great guy. He's done a lot for this industry. He's made a you know big contribution. He's fed a lot of people. Yes, so he has. Yes, he's he fed, has. He's, yes, he's, he fed, he's, he's fed yeah, a lot and he's of people. He's got a, just a tremendous team there too at Grimway. Just really developed a tremendous team. So uh, yeah, on, honored to have him 
uh, be the recipient of this year's award. That's all. All right. So one more time, let's wrap this thing up. We got Organic Grower Summit, November 30th, December 1st, Hyatt Regency, Monterey, show floor sold out. Tickets are going. I don't even know by the time we air this, there may not be tickets left. So if you want to go get online, whatever it takes, because you're not going to want to miss exactly everything we just threw out to you, because it's going to be an incredibly informative 48 hours. And like we said earlier, you've been with your family over the holidays. Get the hell out. Yeah, come on. Let's call it what it is. You want to get the hell out. And Matt's giving you a great overall two days to get the hell out. So go see it. I had more, I've had more than, more than several people come up to me and, and cause I worry about that week after Thanksgiving, is that the week to do it? And just like you said, Hey, I just spent all this time with my family. Yeah. I need to, I need to, I'm out. we love our families, but yeah, but I guarantee you, so, somebody will be in there going, I'm getting my suitcase out of the garage on Saturday. Yes. Right. It's like, no, I'm out. I got to go. I've had enough of you people. Right. Cause Christmas exactly. is coming and they're like, Oh God, we got to do it again. No, I'm teasing. I think it's great. awesome. Anything else exciting? Anything else with, you know, OPS, OPN? Well, next one, no, uh, guys- just come, come in full circle. Next week, we will have Q3 data, uh, organic data that we will be sharing with the industry. So uh, we'll, we'll have that. I, I think, Todd, as you and I have, you know, kind of come in full circle, I think we're going to see that continuation of inflation eating away at sales. Uh, dollars may be up a little bit, but I expect what happened in Europe it's going to mirror what we're going to see here. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with you. And I, and I think the thing that we've got to be mindful of is that this is not going to be a short fix. I think this is an 18 to 24 month problem that's going to continue. And we're going to have to get our arms wrapped around it and to help people remember that, you know, blueberries are good for you. Vegetables are good for you. Fruits are good for you. Water's good for you, all of it, right? We've got to keep these conversations going around why food matters and what how important it is to everybody's health and well-being. And that's going to be a really strong message. We're all going to need to preach, you know, exactly. And keep, you know, but again, Todd, the bit, as you and I know, nobody's got it better than you and I, we got the, we got the greatest products in the world to promote. So yeah, there's no let's doubt. Let's do it. Let's I get to it. work and do it. I love you know. it. I appreciate you being here, brother. Once again, right, this, likewise, this brother, is, what is this like? Number three, number Thank three, you. three, number, whatever it is. I don't even know. Four. Number I, three. I, I get, You're I, almost I, catching I, Jenny. No, I wouldn't. Jenny, Jenny's a superstar. I love listening to her. I mean, the, her, the wealth and knowledge that she has is unmatched yeah. uh, in she's our industry. A, it really is. She, she she's is awesome. a blast. She's a blast to be around. She really is. She's, she awesome. is. she's a really sweet person. I, I dig her tremendously. Yeah. All right, everybody. There you go. Organic Grower Summit. Let's go get online. If you haven't booked your ticket, get your ticket. You better hurry because they may not be there. So go, go, go. Let's see you up there. I hope to see everybody when you're there. Y'all take care. We appreciate you, Matt. I love you, brother. Thanks for coming out. Remember, check us out on social media, everybody. TLC underscore conversations. We hang out there because that's where the cool kids are. And that's where the Kardashians are. And that's where I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> take care, everybody. Go inspire somebody today. It's really important. Appreciate you, Matt. I'll see you soon, brother. All right, brother. Thank you, Todd. Talk to you soon, see brother. Everyone. Thank Bye-bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye.